going to start off by toasting our bap. Make sure your fingers are out of the way of the bread knife. Get it under a hot grill. And while you're doing that, you're going to be melting the butter. This is the microwave in the food room and the door latch is bottom right. Set microwave, set one minute, set start. And then you're going to go and check this every 15 seconds. We don't want that butter to burn. In the meantime, you've got a little bit of time to put the baps into the grill and you're only toasting one side. Once the butter is nearly fully melted, in other words, you need to have a little bit of butter that's not melted and only use the residual heat of the melted section to melt the rest of the butter. We don't want burnt butter. So we haven't used the full minute and there's I've got a little bit of um, butter still unmelted and that's fine. Remember to stop and cancel the setting before you close the door. By that point, the bap should have been lightly toasted. Put the grill pan back in and switch the grill off, but don't close the, the door, otherwise um, the glass might break. Then we need one egg, that's for the poaching of the egg, and then two egg yolks. So I'm separating an egg here, and unfortunately I won't be needing this white, so I'll have to throw it away. So I've got two egg yolks and the, the, the yolks are for the hollandaise sauce and the whole egg is for the poaching liquor. And here you can see I've got two pans. Uh, the back pan on the right hand side is half filled with water. That's going to be the poaching liquor. And in the front pan, I've got a double boiler, half filled with water, uh, no more than half, and a glass bowl on top that sits comfortably but doesn't touch the water. I'm going to put vinegar in the back pan to help coagulate the egg when it's poaching and then vinegar in the bowl to help coagulate the egg when we're whisking it. Now a double boiler is a very useful, um, but you need to use it quite cautiously. Uh, it's a useful item where steam gently heats the egg while you whisk it. So there's no direct heat on this bowl. That's the point of a double boiler. So we're going to get that heated and we don't want it heating to more than simmering. Both of these pans should not be more than simmering. And what we're going to do is with a balloon whisk, continue to whisk these egg yolks until they go pale. I've added some salt there. And we're adding egg and I'm just going to keep lifting to check that I haven't got any um, boiling happening in there and that's the melted butter there. I tip the bowl a little bit to help air to get into the mixture a little bit more and it also keeps one side of the bowl a little bit cooler so that you can use your hand to lift the bowl up and check that it's not too hot. If you start getting boiling water it'll cook the egg too quickly. And if you aren't a very fast whisker, you don't want that egg cooking too quickly, otherwise it'll scramble on, on the side of the bowl. Make sure that if you do see any bits that are hardening on the side of the bowl, that you, you do something with them really quickly, get your whisk on them really quickly. Because if they harden to the scrambled point, it'll actually affect the quality of your sauce. So I'm waiting for the big bubbles to um, disappear and break up into small bubbles and I'm incorporating air here and just keep checking that it's I've just got simmering water and not boiling water. A lot of people um, call this a bain-marie but this is a double boiler. A bain-marie is a um, roasting tin of water f uh, for things like puddings. So we whisk this until we see that it's becoming a bit ribbony. Um, it's light and pale and fluffy and um, the mixture isn't easy to pour now, it's a little bit thicker. At this point it's time to start adding the melted butter a little bit at a time. Now the egg is coagulating but the, the egg has got lecithin in it and lecithin will hold on to the water in the egg and the fat in the melted butter and help to emulsify the sauce. 
This is really a warm mayonnaise. And a lot of people now use um, a blender to make hollandaise. Um, and they use very hot butter, um, egg yolks at room temperature, and the butter pouring in while you're blending it actually will emulsify it just like if you're making a mayonnaise. Um, but if you are going to do a hollandaise sauce for your exam, do it this way, it'll get you more marks. So you pour the butter in a little bit at a time because you want the lesser thin to have time to deal with the um, melted butter that you've added. If you overwhelm it, it'll scramble. Um, and although you can bring it back with another egg yolk, um, it's better to do it right first time and not waste time having to do it again. So as you add more butter, it actually becomes thicker. It's just like a mayonnaise. The more oil you add, the thicker the mayonnaise gets. Here, the more butter you add, the thicker the hollandaise gets. This has got quite a lot of butter in it, which is why it's a nice, smooth, silky sauce. Um, but there also, there's also vinegar in there, so it cuts through the fattiness of the sauce and you get a really good balance to produce a rich sauce, not a fatty sauce. And it depends on your personal preference, how thick you want this. You can see how thick it's getting. Um, I think personally a hollandaise should be quite thick, but this is for my husband. He doesn't like very thick hollandaise sauce. Although I'm going to make it thicker than he likes, I can put a tiny splash of water to loosen it up a little bit. And a lot of people will refresh a hollandaise that, that has been sitting to one side for, let's say, 15 minutes while you're constructing your um, bap with your ham and so on. So sometimes if you allow it to sit, it will um, need a little bit of loosening up. Swap the pans round and bring the poaching liquor forward. And I'm going to show you two things that people do wrong. The vinegar will help to coagulate, so that has to go in the water. But most people, when they're making a mistake with poaching, they get the water too animated and into boiling point, and they put the egg in when it's boiling. So I'm trying to create a vortex here, but you can see the bubbles are actually filling the whole of the vortex. That will actually break up the egg, so you won't get a nice bulbous shape. So that's the first mistake people make. This is the water that's been let um, to cool down a little bit, and it's only just below simmering now. And the vortex isn't enough to do the job here. And so what people will do then is try to go in with a spoon and try to mould it uh, with a spoon. Well, if you start poking at that egg white, it'll just break up completely and the water will turn to a sort of milky liquid. So don't go poking at it. So here it is simmering really get that vortex going and then the advantage of putting the egg into a bowl is you can deliver it to the vortex straight away and the vortex will help the egg white to wrap around the yolk. After two or three minutes you've got the shaggy side up, you can fish it out very gently. Now here I'm trying to fish it out and I actually break the yolk. Put it onto some uh, paper. Thankfully, the yolk is still running. And the paper will help you to deliver the shaggy side down and the bulbous side up. Now, a good poached egg should have a runny yolk, but not a runny white. And then here it is with some watercress on a brown toasted bap and a silky smooth sauce. It's a little bit too thin for me, but that's the way my husband likes it. So. If you break open the um, yolk, that adds to the sauce. And here it is with some um, salmon, but it's traditionally served with ham, or you could serve it with bacon and some chives or tarragon. So, what's the point of a double boiler? The egg yolk starts to coagulate first before adding the melted butter. Then what does the lesser thin in the egg allow the mixture to do? What state should both saucepans of water be in? 
What does creating a vortex in the poaching liquor do? And what are the optional extras that provide a delicious eggs benedict? Now we call um, water a liquor if it's got another additional ingredient in. And in this case, that was vinegar. <laughs>